Hello everybody, welcome to CCL Season 46 first round match between Engelbert Hex and his Norse and Thomas T and his Dark Elves. In the booth with me is Fymir and Dimmy G. Hello! Hello everybody, here we are, the Norse versus the Thomas T uh, Elves, which is uh, again a full team of Dark Elves, what's going on? It's unbelievable, isn't it? 13 players. Are we sure it's Thomas T? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's happening? This is changing, man. If you want to win Chalice, you've got to start eating porridge for breakfast. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh dear. Right. <laughs> so let's have, a, let's have a look here. We've got a yet. Oh, so inducements wise, we've got Wilhelm Cheney and a bribe and a babe rather than a wizard. Interesting. And Thomas T obviously doesn't have anything. He's yeah, what's your opinion on no wizard? Like, like. I'm always in a really weird spot where I always feel like the wizard is kind of meh against the elves, but I always wish I had a wizard when I don't take a wizard against elves. Yeah, I think if he had one more dirty player, then uh, the bribe would be even better, but it just depends on like your equity assessment and stuff, isn't it? If you, if you think you're going to get value from fouling every turn. and like, you Wait, can like How are you going to get the ball off that blodger without a whiz? Yes. Right? I mean, I, I would take a list still, but... You um, would, yeah, okay, good to know. Yeah. I can understand people not wanting to. Over Cheney, like, over Cheney. Cause I know, oh, not I know over Cheney, like... no, not over Cheney. I, I would take it over the bribe and the babe. I wouldn't take it over Cheney, I would take Cheney. Oh, okay, so. okay. So, right, if you only had enough for Cheney or the wizard... It would depend. It would, like, the, Cheney's one okay. of the players that I would take over a wizard sometimes. Really? Okay. Yes. That's good to know because I like I know there's a lot of fanboys for Cheney out there. Yeah. And I, I am not one of them, <laughs> surprisingly. So is is because Cheney is bloody good. Yeah. I know he's good, but I feel like a wizard is always good. Like I don't know. Well the thing that's is you get one me. turn of a wizard or you get sixteen turns of a move eight strength four wrestle. Card. But that's unfair because it's not Cheney or the wizard because the Cheney costs more than hundred and fifty, so it's no, Cheney I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or a wizard and an apple or a bribe. Yeah, I, I just wanted to simplify the question and make it like, look, if you can afford Cheney or a wizard. Yeah. Right. But then again, it like same thing with everything in Blood Bowl. It depends, right? So yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, the sad he, thing. Yeah, and he might get cast out. Like obviously, if it's versus Clawpon, then it looks stupid. But like, there, there's times when I would take Cheney. At least there's there are at least times when I would take Cheney. Yeah. And there yeah, are yeah. times when I would take um, Silly Billy. And then maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah I, maybe, I, maybe they're I, the I only that two that I would. I think they're maybe the only two that I would take over a wizard, basically. Well, maybe a lot of Griff, people, a I lot of people, Griff, right? a lot of fanboys on uh, the Kemri guy, uh, Setek, and I, I, I'm not a big fan of Setek either. But a lot of Cheney people like. Setek as well. Yeah, Setek for Kemri is, is okay because like Kemri aren't gonna be able to take advantage of a wizard very well. So so like that but there's Yeah, there's that makes there. sense. Yeah. That does make sense. Yeah. I, okay. I don't think I would take Eldra a lot of a wizard, but you know, who knows? I I, I love Eldrill, like I'm a big Eldrill fan. I'm more of an Eldrill fan than a Cheney fan to be honest. Mm. I am, yeah. But maybe, again, maybe that's play style or lack of experience, I don't know. It's, this uh, was weird, this formation, wasn't it? It was very, like, very thin. So he's just... It was, but, yeah, it was, it was a thin Venger bus. So, like, it's, it's one of them ones where, like, people know that the Venger bus is good, but they don't understand why they're using it. And uh, <laughs> yeah. where Whereas a double screen would be absolutely perfectly fine. And mm. a, a, maybe a more established player would just double screen instead of using the Venger. The Venger bus is kind of like a mid to late drive thing I think. Like, I think because it's the fine first... early, it's just that he's got three players well, yeah, not, not want... contributing, hasn't he? That this is the you, problem. You want the you want you want something outside of the Venger bus. Yes. You can't just yeah. Venger bus and nothing else. <laughs> not it's yet, like yeah. it's like Space Cadet. <laughs> Sorry Space. <laughs> well, I do apologize. But it's like it's like not understanding the fundamentals of the game. But like no disrespect. Like obviously that's a lot of disrespect, but yeah or, uh, <laughs> It's not understanding why you're doing something for me personally. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's it's maybe sounds a bit harsh, but I get what you I get what yeah, you're trying it's, to say. It's the it's the right idea. It's absolutely the right idea, but it's not fully understanding why you do it. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like you you're doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. 
Like, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll show you the Wenger bus because like he, he was in the formation. I'll, I'll you know I've seen someone's asked. I'll say right. So you've got you've got a normal cage, right? The X cage. Um, you've got a player in the middle with a ball. You've got four players so that it's a six plus to dodge in, basically or five plus for elves. Um, with a Wenger bus, you put two players up there and you put two players back there, so you've got two in the middle. And then, so it's still given the same hardness to dodge in, but it means they can't dodge in for like a one dice. It'll be an uphill because there's another player there, unless they come in the rear. But then you have a guard player, or you have three players at the back, so that you can, um, so that they, they, you will always be an uphill if they dodge in. So like, Which, it's good against like leaps because leap, it, yeah, leap yeah. is the big thing to use. Agility it against. five. Yeah, yeah. And wizards. Yes, yeah. Wizards. But not dark elves, <laughs> like oh. it, necessarily. No, not Dark Elves. This is not a team that screams you should you should do that with. Finger, you, yeah. You just want more. Uh, you want a more so, cage against this team. Yeah. It's like one of them things that you know is good, but you don't know why it's good, so you just do it and maybe understanding it. And I I I think it is pretty good against sidestep. To be honest, I think sidestep might be a variable. Um, yeah. but you just the the way he set it up as well. He didn't have any sort of protection for it, so it it allows uh, yeah. Thomas T to apply a load of pressure. Yeah, like it it, it um, wasn't bad having it. It's just he had three people in front of it, so like it was like yeah. this is crazy because these are just as thin as these three. So it was yeah, it was really yeah. really really weird. Right idea, wrong wrong execution. I think. Yeah. And maybe not right idea, but like not to <laughs> yeah. be too harsh. Yeah, I, th I think the I think the Venger bus kind of thing wasn't bad. It was just the the. The putting three people in front is wild and crazy and wrong and terrible. <laughs> but it's, it all goes back to the stabilization phase, doesn't it? At the end of the day, Dark Elves are not the fastest elves you're going to face. Like, there's no problem with stabilizing, uh, like, within the middle of your own path um, because you're not going to get suddenly surrounded and outplayed and all that sort of thing. So, mm. understanding your strengths of your opponent and what particular race they're playing, what skills they've got. And understanding where you can afford to stabilize and where you don't. Obviously, Norse want to bang, right? Norse want to bang, but yeah. they also want to protect the ball. And sometimes protecting the ball is easier to do with distance than it is with basing or Wenger bussing or anything like that. So if you're out of their range for blitzing, that's fine. Like that, that's the best, can't... in fact, isn't it? If you just can't be hit at all, that's better yeah, than letting somebody yeah. roll like five but sixes. Then, to but hit then, you. <laughs> there, there is one problem with that, Jim. Is people normally have ho their whole team on the halfway line and they have the ball carrier back. Yes. And then yeah. elves just run around the back of you. They cut off your front line and then you're absolutely effed. Yeah. So it's also important to understand the stabilization phase in the sense that you're not just stabilizing the ball by having that out of range but your whole team is in a position where you can move the ball forward into a stable environment afterwards yes the gfi was to he was going to double gfi to base the ball i guess rather than just that was there, a like really good explanation Jimmy. yeah yeah top stuff that was really really good you know your blood ball i like, I, I understand how to play Blood Bowl, I just can't play Blood Bowl. <laughs> I'm a bit like ADEV, basically. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> no. Like, it's, it's understanding, like, there's certain things that you pick up, and it's... There's certain phases that... Probably someone should do a YouTube video. Uh, Jim, someone on, should, yeah, on, someone should. Or on phases of a drive. Yeah. And, and there's three, there's three main phases. And obviously there's variables and it's different for every sort of race. Um, but it would probably be pretty useful for, I'd say, 80% of the community. Yeah, oh, I think so, yeah. Could could call it advanced tips. But yeah, yeah, basically stabilization. And then, and then you've got, you've, you've, basically from there you're trying to create penetration, aren't you? That's the thing. Yes, the and then execution right. at the final stage. Yeah. Which is just really more penetration, isn't it? Scoring, it's just scoring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just scoring. So it's basically penetration, and like you, you try to probe for it, and then and you can get it early, and then stall out, and but that's it's and, still and, penetration, and then, isn't it? So I, I and think then you've got you've got are you the orc or the elf, and yeah. are you avoiding contact or embracing contact, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's 
I've got a lot of and ideas. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got a, uh, I've got a sheet. I've got a, I've got a Google sheet with loads of ideas for things. Is, so it, is it a spreadsheet, Jim? It is a spreadsheet. Yep. So I'll oh definitely, I'll, I will be making more. I mean, is I made my Wood Elf one recently, so I'll be making more for sure. I haven't seen the Wood Elf one. Was the Wood, was the Wood Elf one just Daka? No. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't. Oh, I got to watch this then. It's, it's just about like what skills to take and stuff. But uh, I will do like a DACA. a DACA I, Mate, I think, I think, I think, uh, I think a series of three YouTube videos for Bash Hybrid and Agi teams for okay. stage stages of the drive. Yep. And and things to look out for, like whether whether or not you want to engage or disengage. Like engaging and disengaging is something that people don't think about enough. I think with. Yep. Uh, Blood Bowl. I, I, I think it, spotting when you need to engage and when, when you need to disengage or where you need to just like shore things up like it's mm. a, a higher level skill I think mm. yeah pretty much Stradica but yeah I mean the, the Norse were absolutely ball bagged here and yes it, be, <laughs> it might be down to stabilisation which is the first step of uh and like Thomas T's no mug. Well, it, it was it was area control is what it was, right? That's what it was. Yeah. It was like space, space, spatial dominance, and they just didn't have it. Like it's it's what it's what uh, it's what thingy did. Uh, oh, Benny ben, Bernie Buffon did against Davo, right? In the in the in the World Cup when he had like he had about eight players in like a in like a ten by two square or something insane, and and that's what he did. He, yeah. he just got all of his players in like a really small area, and that's just terrible. Yeah, so the ball's really protected, but you're never moving forwards <laughs> yeah, yeah. like and that's the thing as well is like you're you're setting up your next turn every turn that you take is you're setting up your next turn so like keeping the ball safe is all well and good but if you haven't set up the next turn for you to move forwards you haven't achieved the goal of that turn yeah yeah that's good so, well it's true it's true like yeah, you yeah, like, like it's like you you can make the ball absolutely safe, but cripple your offense by making it so safe that you haven't pushed forward enough to give you options in the next turn. So, like, you can venga bus, and yes, the ball is safe for that turn, but then you cannot, you don't, you don't put guys on the flanks or in front, or the, you don't screen it off correctly. So your venga bus gets surrounded, and then you're absolutely screwed. Mm -hmm. Which is basically what we've seen Engelbert Hex do. Yeah. I'll have to look at this, the goal concept of influence. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Do you think there was an early GG in chat? Uh, I mean, that, that could have been thrown out. and uh, yeah. uh, I'd be, By all means, that just upsets the whole feng shui of the, uh, <laughs> the, the battle between these races. Yeah, that's true. Norse can always start a high roll, can't they? Like, you know, they, they haven't done a lot yet. They've made a cast. Well, they need to now, sadly. Yeah. Um, it's it's like obviously it's plan A or like uh, is to high roll this Dark Elf team, um, but it like plan B and plan C are out the window now, so it's just you have to high roll this. Yeah. And it's recognising you have to high roll this, and you just foul. And but he also he's not stabilising. He's he's very up and aggressive in his setup. So. Well, he's, he's got two turns to score to me, so he can't be very oh, safe, okay. can he? <laughs> he can't there is be very that. Safe. Yeah, that's, that's true. Oh but my god, this is, has to be a blitz here. No, oh it's my not. god. Like, you can't block with Cheney. He's move eight and has catch. <laughs> like, like, you cannot just block with him. Yeah. You just cannot. He's just not trying, is he? Uh, no, there's no, there's no scoring for it, Jim. So this is... Uh, He's just trying not to go 2-0 down. <laughs> well, why bring the ball forward? Well, I guess... Okay, we've I got mean, a scoring threat. One. One scoring at least, threat. That's getting at least hit with frenzy. <laughs> a base, two base scoring threats. Yeah. Which is terrible. Yeah. And a foul that's not going to put him in scoring range. Uh, it's going to get him sent off. Yep. Yeah, ban this man. <laughs> Gross lack of effort. <laughs> Just a joke, of course. 
No, I've seen it. I've seen Engelbert play, and I've seen him play pretty well. So, and this is not one of his finest games, but Thomas T is a good player as well, and Thomas T will punish like a yeah. uh, suboptimal play, like not like bad play, but suboptimal, like not Chalice level, like. <laughs> And plus the disparity between the teams, like Dark Elves are, uh, Dark Elves, I, I think Dark Elves surprisingly are one of the teams that people make more mistakes against than other teams. Mm. And I, I think that's just down to them not really, like they're not Pro Elves and they're not Wood Elves, they're not fast, but they still are Raggy 4 and they bang as well, like it's, uh, mm. it's an interesting one. Whew. Re didn't re-roll that. I think that might have been worth a re-roll, you know. Because if you Only get the power re there, then then you, you're in with a shot of scoring against him, right? Like, you, your only re-roll is next for the next turn, where he's probably going to get banged down and, and stuff, or is... Oh, yeah, and, and Engelbert is scoring if he's not yeah. giving the ball away, basically. Yeah, I think you should have re-rolled that. I guess at least you left something marking, so that took the blitz, so, you know. And he's got no scoring threat, has he? So he's got two. He's got two. No, I mean oh, Thomas yeah, yeah. D. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas D. has yeah. got no score. So the the so the re-roll makes more sense because obviously if you re-roll into a skull, you've got no scoring threat. Yeah, and he's he's got this as a scoring threat, right? He has got the scoring threat. So he's gonna foul. Okay. So, so I guess he didn't he didn't re-roll because he was trying to get the counter score. Yeah, I think so. But I still like re-rolling to try and get the counter score because if you power him... Then but the problem is good. you've only got the one scoring threat, which... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe if you had a second scoring threat, then you re-roll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. it's, mate, it's weird, isn't it? It's so weird how, like, it's that intense. How mm. many decisions you have to make in three minutes. Like, it's... Yeah. Hmm. It's intense. Like I'm like anyone who hasn't played in Chalice, like this is really intense. Like so it's <laughs> it's all really easy for us to sort of go, oh I don't know about that, I don't know about that. But you've got to make all these decisions in three minutes. Um honestly, I like my biggest advice to anyone who ever plays in Chalice is prep. Like prep everything in your head. Like go, right, if this happens, what am I going to do? If this happens, what am I going to do? If this happens, what am I going to do? And like, you just need to understand what your driver is going to look like, what their driver is going to look like, what's the worst case scenario, what's the best case scenario, and at what point do you need to go from plan A to plan B to plan C? And like, it's yeah, Charlie's nerves is a real thing. They and are, mate. Like, and I know people take the piss out of that. Yeah, like, I, I it's always fucking say. true. Like, I played, I, say I played, that uh, very stressful. Yeah. I played ducky, mate, and what, I put my pants. So I, I honestly put my pants. I was outclassed. I was outgunned. Like you had a better team, and like and, but I was also up for it. Do you know what I mean? Like when you, when you play against a, a really good player, like like for me anyway, like my level raises, depending on my opponent, which is really bad. Like it's not mm -hmm. a winning mentality. Like I, if I'm playing against someone bad, I'll play relatively badly. But like if I'm playing against someone good, I I tend to raise my level. So yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, which is really bad for this particular format because anyone can beat you, um, mm. sadly. Um, <laughs> but then, like, but the, the one of the biggest ways of dealing with that is having a plan when you're going into the the game. Like when I pl when I played against Ducky, I thought about everything. I, I literally thought about like how it, and like it basically came down to overtime and like i still had the wizard in overtime i felt i looked really good and he just two turned me which i didn't expect it was completely off the wall for me and like i was just like bang damn i'm out <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like yeah cheers dim i never thought i was gonna lose <laughs> so i was like wow yeah exactly hell boy yeah exactly hell boy but for a game that is completely about like is it is it mitigation or like it's not like completely lost... about mitigation but it it is about lost... risk reward yes. and stuff i guess yeah 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 this is the, yeah for a game that is totally about that like surely you have like and i'm not talking about every ccl game because that's just nonsense you're not going to go into every ccl game thinking you you don't even know what you're playing against or anything like that but i'm talking about in chalice like if you want to win and want to be competitive 
Um, like you should have some idea. Like and even like on tabletop at a stretch, you should know that particular match or have an idea of the matchup and yeah. uh, what's good and what's bad and stuff like that. And uh, and like that's why um, like volume of games that you play is is kind of important because you just kind of learn what's good and what's bad in yes it. exactly yes funnily enough saying about the Mike Tyson everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face the thing is like people just can't unlearn all their habits and instincts and everything yeah. can they so like that's what you need more than a plan I guess right because and and people who've been punched in the face 45 times might have a better plan than <laughs> someone who's been punched in the face five times you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so get your ass kicked <laughs> <laughs> I mean, enjoy the ride <laughs> Oh wow, Tyson punched somebody on a plane. Glorious. Oh mate, to be fair, if Tyson punched me in the face, I'd probably be dead, so... Uh... Yeah, yes, be a good yes, chance that's a... Very good chances of that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy. Uh, it, might, it might have been more than 45, to be honest. <laughs> wow, he's, he's farming passes. What a scumbag. I would never do that with elves. I would, I would never make a 2 plus pass with elves. Thomas T is a mad bastard, to be honest. This is pretty fucking mental. Does, yeah, does he know there's a Rackler there? What the fuck oh, no. is this about? <laughs> what on earth? What in the blue fuck is he doing? He's a mad bastard, to be honest. This is insanity. Like, he's got, he's got, he's got Cheney straight there anyway. Like, even if he tags him, he's just frees Cheney and four dices him with Wrestle. Like. Oh, will he spot it, Jim? <laughs> Like, it's I crazy, don't. Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. He might have. He might have spotted it. Well, now, he just, now he assists with. Uh, now he assists with Cheney and Shh. Yeah, I was gonna say the Rackle must be better here. Oh yeah, but I mean, he was gonna tag him with with blood step diamond tackle, the, wasn't he? Like, the was problem is, is if you go, if you go with Cheney, you've got the Rackle as recovery. Whereas if you don't you've go with Cheney, thing, can he make it all the way there? Yeah. yeah which yeah. where are you blitz? Which where are you blitz? I'll put wait sidestep. Sidestep, yeah, it doesn't matter. Sidestep. It doesn't matter. I think it does Whoa. matter. No. I think it does matter. No. Because he's tied. Yeah, he sidesteps there, and now he can't get. And then the ball. you catch it with Cheney because oh. you catch. Okay. Look, now you can reach it. See. Totally. Yeah, but if that, if that ball scatters right. If some or... butts don't matter, do they, Jimmy? Uh, all right, if uh, fair, Jim. <laughs> Now this guy outplayed. gets surfed. Now this guy gets surfed. Thomas T's a genius. <laughs> absolute pro play, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh my god! What an annoying. Like I've got, I can't even have sound on, obviously, but already this guy's like super annoying and deserves to be punched. Sound? What's that got to do with sound? <laughs> I can't have the sound on, like, even without listening to this guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a video on the plane. The, the, the guy that... The, the guy You're that watching that? Oh, there. right. No, no, yeah. And even without sign, mm. the, I would want to punch the guy. <laughs> I mean, some people just deserve it, like, honestly. Yeah. like, and, and I think as a society, we're, we're, we're moving away from that too much. Yeah. And, like, it should be okay to punch people sometimes, like, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I think a lot of people that I met especially when I was younger were very awful to be around until they got punched in the face loads of times and then they <laughs> realized their mistakes and now they're lovely people <laughs> well if you want a story about the people doing stupid things there was a group of guys that were uh, making jokes about Andre the Giant you know imagine with uh, Andre Andre was drinking in a bar and a uh, three guys decided it was very funny to start making jokes about him and laughing at him oh look at that guy oh, look at that andre the giant <laughs> yeah so the uh, andre confronted the guys tell them to fuck off the guys keep going and when the guys left got in a car and andre went outside and just turned around the car <laughs> And never, nothing happened because when the police arrived, they didn't believe that some crazy giant had come and turned around their car. <laughs> but I mean, what are you thinking when you see, you know, probably the biggest man on the planet 
having a drink quietly and say, okay, that's the guy with the big sword, yeah. Yeah, people are just cunts, aren't they? Oh shit, well, there goes YouTube. People are just, just seen us, aren't they? Like, Wanger has been like, started by people before because they've got a bunch of mates ready to back them up, haven't they? Hey, big big guys get more trouble than little guys. That oh, is no. a fact. All right, my brother is like really tall. And people will just start on him because he's the tallest geezer in the pub, like, do you know what I mean? Mm. So it's, yeah, because it's the they want to look is. really hard with their eight mates and whatever. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, it's absolutely They're like, Yeah. It's the little men you got to watch out for. <laughs> there we go. Oof. This is uh, this is a really sloppy drive from Thomas T, isn't it? In the midst of all this, but uh, he's like that's that random potato. I've got no, I've got no idea what that was about. I think he should have dacked, but you know he didn't. Mate, it's the problem with going one nil up on your opponent's drive. Like it, it creates sloppiness. Like I see mm -hmm. it in high level coaches all the time. Well, you see, he went for the two turn score, which just always works without any dice needing to be rolled. I don't know how it hasn't worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to stop that, <laughs> or at least not soon. But mate, a, a player on someone like Ducky's level will realise that the two turn is not on, and he'll make it a four turn. Yeah. Like it's it's level. There's levels to this game, and you you notice it in gents. Mm. That's why Eliot's never won Chalice. Just Wow! <laughs> Sorry, I love you, Elliot. <laughs> yeah, Elliot's lovely. I I absolutely love that guy, and he he has single-handedly made me better at Blood Bowl as well. So and there you go. He's one of the best out there, without uh, no argument. Yep. And should have been banned for life for soft conceding in uh, all his chalice games <laughs> and sniping and sniping necronome never forget uh, yeah never yes. forget never forget uh, necronome is a good friend of mine after being part of the uh the stream dream team that uh came third at uktc yeah hey, he catches it what absolutely disgusting is sniping coming to necronome's chat and telling him if you were spin i'm gonna try to snipe you someone banned steve Morty. said it's over someone oh, ban him man. So, blood balls like an onion. There are lots of layers, but as you progress, you smell worse and start crying. <laughs> <laughs> I, use, I use that, but they still the same blood ball. Is, I talk about myself. Oh, I'm a man with many layers, <laughs> like an onion, and each one of them will make you cry. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. How has Thomas T got himself in this position? He just randomly potatoed. Like, it was insane. He passed and then potatoed. Like, it was nuts. I, I don't know if it was, pressure. Like, pressure. Insanity or what. It was crazy. Yes, he, he did the things in the wrong order. Instead of trying to tack first... The and to, add, to add some context to this as well, Thomas T is, I think he's got the highest unbeaten rate in Chalice, uh, in, in CCL, so yeah. he's gone 54 games unbeaten, and it, uh, it was with Necro and not with uh, Dark Elves. Yeah, it was just um, nuts, there was no need to do it, it was just, it was like, it was like the Kislev guy that played Chunder, who just kept sideline caging for no reason and just refused to cage normally, and this was kind of similar, he was just like, no, I'm not, not going to just Obviously a Space one. Cadet viewer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, <laughs> no disrespect. I love you, Space Cadet. <laughs> like, it was really weird. The ball was safe. There was no pressure, and he just, he just like, like, help me against Andy Dale the other day. There was Ooh. just like, there was no reason to go crazy. He's just like, I'm just going to take over. No, absolutely no reason. Just mad. Oh, here we go. Someone's dead. I don't, I don't know about not picking up the ball against elves. Like, I, I, I really have a problem with not picking up. Like, even yeah. though it's fucking terrible. Like. I yeah. I I always want to pick the ball up against elves. I do yeah. not want to leave it on the floor. Yeah, it's just too um, easy for the scatter. It. Like this yeah. is just so easy to get the scatter here, even though it doesn't look like he's going for it. Well, he might still be going for it. Yeah, I guess uh, he is. I guess he's going for the witch blitz. Like it's so easy to get the scatter. That it's like... yeah. I I just I really don't like leaving the ball on the floor against elves. Like yeah. in any kind of situation, like, even how bad it is. Yeah. Oh, there you go, it's worked out. For okay, me. you got away with it, you got away with it. It's, <laughs> it's cool. Master plan. But it's, it's, it's a really tough one. 
I think that's one of the top, especially against Skaven. Skaven, Wood Elves, and well, any elf to yeah, be fair. Yeah, any elf, yeah. Um, leaving the ball on the floor is always uh, like for me personally, from experience, it's a no. It's, I think that's always a mistake. You can uh, pick up the ball, you pick up the ball. Yeah. I mean, it would have been a four plus. It, it, it would have been a four plus, and like. 50% of the time it doesn't work and it could have been a worse scatter and all that sort of thing but just having the ball in your hand um, super strong <laughs> yeah Matthew <that's> <laughs> you do be like that sometimes it's like that every time Jim to be fair uh, not every what? time why is he putting there I don't know I Jim I was gonna... I didn't Cheney's want to ask gonna hit here. Che it's because Cheney's going to hit here and that's how he's going to get up yeah, because this guy isn't sized up or anything, so he can just he can just take lob a pass, isn't he? He's gonna lob a pass. Yeah, so get rid of that one. He's running it's out of time. Not... Turn fourteen, so he doesn't have to pass now. So I guess it was the I idea. Think, I think I think he has to pass. No, I no, no. He's he three turns. Three turns. He's got plenty of time. But if uh, keeping it on the that guy is is he a blodger? I no. can't tell because no, no. He's just he could hand off guy. to the blodger, right? He could hand off to the blodger. He can make a cage. Or he's going for a pass. No? no. He's... Just, no? just dodge him. Dodge him out, ah. and you've got like a formation. Yeah. Um. He could have actually just stayed here, right? He could have just been in between these two. I don't think there's yeah. any guard at all on, on Thomas T's team. <clears throat> so that was maybe a mistake there. Maybe he should have just gone in between and like I caged it. Blitz with the other wolf, so you'd have a guard there was an option, but I mean, obviously blitzing with block and mighty blow is, is appetising. So, Lemon Lemon is good, is, makes a very good point. He says, as much as the Dark Elf scoring play was not very good, this is starting to become a bit of a dicing, but Shawnee would say you've allowed yourself to be diced. Yes, yes. yes. He, he asked for a dicing, like Thomas T asked for a dicing with that. And he's lucky he's still oh. being it. He's got no rerolls. Like, oh, no, no, no. Rerolls sorry, sorry. Him. I beg your pardon. I'm referencing the wrong person. I should be referencing Artemis, no. who says that you, you allowed yourself to be diced. And that actually got a bit of heat. Uh, <laughs> like, in the because it is quite funny and stuff like that. But it is kind of true. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, for sure, yeah. It is kind of true. You do if, allow yourself uh, to be If you allow like, your opponent to get the ball, you know, one in uh, nine times. Yeah, it is kind of true. Like it's you do allow yourself to be diced, and like it's it, it's a weird one. Yes, and Artemis it, is a funny one because like he knows his stuff, and a lot of what he says is like you know pretty much spot on. But then also, but also he he also likes to go over the top, doesn't he? And like you know stuff like that. So it's a bit. It's not as cut and dried as. <laughs> it's not as cut and dried as you know. So maybe he's like somebody else's. I mean, like, we all love memeing off it, right? We all love memeing off it. Like, an anything in Blood Bowl, like, as a community, we love memeing, right? <laughs> like, the Dawdle Daedle, and, uh. <laughs> I think he should have like, dodged with uh, Cheney, by the way, but never mind, he didn't. The fact that we have even rules how to drop an early GG, you know, says a lot Yeah, exactly, about how much exactly. We like, we're, we're all, like, way over the top on the memes and stuff, <laughs> but, uh. There are sometimes that stuff that even sounds crazy is correct. That yeah, is that, is, that is GG, yeah. And uh, I think Thomas T needs to uh, look at his drive and uh, slap himself around the face and go yeah. completely yeah. unacceptable. Yeah. Um, and Engelbert Hex needs to look at his drive. He just goes to show, right? Your offensive drive on block, like, like, I know it's like common knowledge that your drive is the easiest thing to do is to score, right? But more people fuck up on their own drive than they do on their defensive drive. Like defense is so much easier well. in Blood Bowl. Well, because you're not the one making the decision. You're the one yes. reacting. You're the one reacting to what your opponent's done. So it's harder to be proactive than reactive, generally. Yes. Yeah. And the best players are proactive, and they. Like, no, and also when you're on the defense, you can use 
all your players. I Meanwhile, when you're on offense, you have to dedicate the yeah, players to protect the ball. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Which comes ball. back to space cadet being right all these years about Cage and his nonsense. I mean, the thing is, here's the thing, right? If you win the coin toss, you choose to be, you choose to receive. Everybody does. It is definitely easier on offense. But I know what you're trying to say. It's like it's it's yeah. It's... Most people mess up on offense. Is what I'm trying to say. Like. Uh, well, like, it's, the onus is on the offense to succeed, so like that's where the pressure is, isn't it? And they've got to make the right plays to to get through and stuff. And and really, if you're on defense, you can get if you can, unless you like really fuck up and like you know leave a three square gap or something. You know, like if you leave, if you leave a gaping hole, you can still mess up on defense, obviously. But it's kind of harder. You've just got to get people mostly in the way. I and think the, the, the difference is making mistakes when you are defending makes you you know the opponent scores, which is more or less expected uh, result. You know, it's like okay, this could happen. But if you mess up your offense and you don't score, it's like, oh my god, I messed it up. Then now it's going to be much more difficult for me to uh, get a draw or even win the game. Right, I'm going to make I'm going to make a massive general sweeping statement. <laughs> right, and I'm going to say more people don't score on their offense in Chalice than any other format of Blood Bowl. Well, I've got no idea if that's true, um, but I'll just no, say no, no, it. No. yes. As as an opinion, <laughs> as an opinion. Um, mm. Obviously, some of that is down to like golf in coaching skill level. Um, some of it is down to chalice nerves, <laughs> which, which is obviously like a hated thing. Um, but like, I see, I see, I see great coaches do terrible offenses in chalice way more often than if you watch them play like their whole like CCL season. But a lot of that is down to the quality of coach they're playing against as well. Yes. Um, much more pressure when you're on offense to mm. the right moves and you're among the more stress, you know. Yeah, I, you I, must, I feel like I feel like people you must make... score. You must yeah. score. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you're yeah. in defense and you think, oh, I couldn't stop the score, well, that's a bad result. You are, yeah. You are able to accept, you know, like okay, these things happen and this is gonna be, you know, another uh, draw or another green or something like that. It's like okay, you know, it's more like it's more expected for the offensive player to score than to not score. So when you don't Mate, the thing, the thing I noticed in tabletop, right, is people are more willing to score at any point in the drive. Like, they, they, I, I think, personally, from my experience, which is a very limited experience, is that they will score over anything. Whereas, we see a lot of risky stalls and stuff in Chalice and stuff, and I don't know whether that's, like, experience or knowledge or whatever. It's also format and stuff as, as well. Yeah, yeah, But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's, uh, let's wrap this up now. Okay, okay, <laughs> um, okay. Thank you very much, Fymir and Dimmy. Commiserations, Engelbert Hex. Congratulations, Thomas T. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks Fymir and Dimmy. Cheers, guys. Yes. Amazon's will never win Chalice. And uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.